the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. That song ministers a lot to me. Anytime I listen to it, it's always bringing back memories, memories of digging deep, a midweek service, whereby you see a lot of men and women, boys and girls, all streaming in at around six, five. They're all streaming in to attend the midweek service just to have an encounter with the Lord. It was such an experience. In those days, I mean, it was so magnificent. I have never seen that kind of a situation, you know, in a very long time. At that time, the world, Nigeria, was witnessing dynamic changes. Everyone going through one thing or the other, one pain, one hurt, one disappointment, here and there. And the Holy Spirit had intensified his operations upon the earth at that time, convincing souls of men and women of sins and driving them desperately for the presence of God. They were all seeking God. Nothing else could satisfy at that time except the Lord. No matter what somebody had or was trying to get, it was magnificent. The presence of the Holy Spirit was very thick and revolutionary upon the earth. Poor and rich getting saved. I know quite a lot of people that gave their life to Christ in that in that hour, in that particular year. There was a revival in the land. You could say that men seeking God for who he was. Campus fellowship was on fire. Young men and women demonstrating the character and power of God. I literally will walk into a, a, a fellowship and you will see young people ministering and people feeling the presence of God. You will see powerful worship, powerful worship, people crying to God. You will see people that had so much children that are coming from a well-to-do family, crying out before God, weeping and crying to God. And you will know that there was something that had gripped the surface of the earth at that time. The worship was intense. Prayers were very deep and heaven-rending. You will see people praying, bombarding the heaven, bombarding the heaven. Ah, it was such a, a wonderful experience. Every now and then I ask myself, where has all that gone? Where has it gone? What has changed? <laughs> Definitely not God. For he says, I'm the Lord, I change it not. <laughs> then it's us that have changed. So today I bring to you a, an exhortation on what I titled the presence of God. The presence of God. Many of us have experienced the presence of God in our Christian walk with God. We know the presence of the Holy Spirit. We know when he walks into our quiet time. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He comes in with His fire, burning through our being, through our body. We could feel Him. The environment changes. The Holy Spirit filling our hearts, bringing us before the Father, and we behold Him. We behold Him in all His aura, in all His glory. And many of us still experience God's presence every day, every hour and every time. While some of us don't even know what it is, many have come into the kingdom, many have come into the denomination. Is it the special I feel good experience we have at the end of every service? Or is it the powerful praise and worship jams that make your body to move to the rhythm? Or the sermon that excites you and make you keep shouting, preach it, preacher. Is that what the presence of God is? And I ask you a question. Do you want the presence of God in your life? Have you experienced the presence of God in your life? And the question is, does the Lord find you a worthy vessel to dwell in? Does it draw you now and then, but you're too busy to give him your time? How much time do you give to stay quietly with him? Early in the morning, late in the night, in the middle of the day, 
you're just walking by and somebody just tell you fellowship with me and you withdraw into one corner into one private place and you're just telling him oh my lord how i love you lord oh how i love you my father my maker my redeemer do you create time for him do you know when the most high walks into your church or house or your worship or your fellowship or your quiet time when his holy spirit comes in the holy spirit of god <laughs> the holy spirit of god <laughs> oh. hmm. david said in psalm 18 verse 1 to 12 i will love you O lord my strength the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my god my strength in whom i will trust my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my enemies that's the song we just listened to i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised <laughs> the lord is worthy to be praised the lord is god the lord is god he is the only one that we need to worship he is the one that deserves our worship the lord he is god <laughs> the lord he is god psalm 63 verse 1 to 3 says oh god you are my god early will i seek you my soul test for you my flesh longs for you in a dry and testy land where there is no water so i have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise you when i remember you on my bed i meditate on you in the night washes because you have been my help therefore in the shadow of your wings i will rejoice my soul follows close behind you your right hand upholds me your right hand upholds me in the middle of the night early in the morning my soul longs for you my soul thirsts for you when last do you thirst for him for the holy spirit when last do you create that quiet time to sit beside him and say holy spirit here i am talk to me fill me up i'm here for you i'm not living until you touch me today i'm not moving talk to me my lord <laughs> oh god oh god oh god Holy Spirit, oh God, you are our refuge and our fortress. Oh God, oh God, oh God, touch us, touch us with your presence, touch us with your presence, Holy Spirit. let us feel you in our life let us feel you in our life i want to share with you i'm sure you've read this story several times there was a nation that we can learn from a nation people that god revealed himself to chosen by god himself let me say it this way 
after we've experienced so much of God or you have not experienced anything of God or you have just felt a bit of it but has the fire gone out have you stopped have you stopped panting after God's presence I tell you one thing irrespective of who we are what we are there is a lesson for us to learn about keeping the presence of God maintaining the presence of God in our lives there is a nation that saw the power of God they are like you and me they saw the presence of God they became familiar with God God was literally descending upon them upon Mount, Zai, Mount Sinai and they would see the presence of God the thunders the lightning the shaking the rumblings the fire they became familiar with God <sighs> they felt God was always slow like many of us like us they only know his acts as in they know only his acts only what he gives that's what they know his gifts his blessing but like Moses they don't know his ways that's what Psalm 103 verse 7 says they seek his gifts and not his persons you know seeking God's gifts Lord give me this thing give me that thing no relationship they don't know his Holy Spirit or they don't pay attention to him they have less concern for relationship with God hmm. they go after men and women of God to make an idol for themselves and they make idols for them forsaking the rock from where they were cut from the rock of our salvation the Lord Jesus Christ now here is the story of these people that forsook God after mighty miracles, signs and wonders. This can happen to anyone. It's a thin line. Right in the midst of the new move of God, the new speaking of God, the new prophecies of God, right in the midst of revival, happening in the land of Israel, which God spoke into being, right in the midst of vision mandate mission that came through power demonstration of god's power in the midst of all of that in the midst of the global movement of god upon the nation of israel in their journey out of bondage into the promised land a nation wrought through miracles through great power of God a nation that saw plagues upon the earth a nation that saw ten plagues a nation that saw God parting the Red Sea a nation that God carried by his hands and led them into their destiny a nation that had 24 our access to God <laughs> this nation in the midst of all this divine manifestation of God they still went ahead to seek an idol they sought and created an idol for themselves in the midst of revival in the midst of the speakings of God they forgot that the Lord God had warned them not to depart from him nor follow after any other gods 
nor idols imagine the one who through his mighty hands plagued and plundered the most powerful nation on the earth they woke up and said they asked Aaron Moses brother who was a priest of God they asked him to do the most abominable thing at that time for them Aaron was a high priest chosen by God the people gathered together in Exodus 32 gathered together to Aaron and said to him come make us gods that shall go before us gods that shall go before them who was the God that has been leading them <laughs> who was the God that brought them out of Egypt do they forget him didn't they put to mind that they just crossed the Red Sea didn't they put to mind that they just escaped the templates that wiped out the firstborn of animals and human beings didn't they put it to birth, to mind the great and mighty things that God did in Egypt how come they forgot how come they said make us gods that will go before us did they think God was tired for as for this Moses they said as for this Moses imagine they removed God from the equation as for this Moses the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt so they even thought it was Moses that brought them out we do not know what has become of him their eyes were on men and not on God their eyes were on men and not on God how many of us when God shows himself strong in our life we come before the the congregation of believers and we said and the man of God said XYZ and I keyed into it and I got this miracle from God I want to give glory to my father or I want to thank this commission they forget me they forget God in their testimony because it is Moses that they saw as the man that brought them up out of Egypt and not God so they said Moses is a man we want another God that will lead us forward they made an idol and Aaron received the gold from their hand and Aaron fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a model calf for them imagine Aaron was a high priest Aaron was the one that told them give me your gold Aaron was the one that turned the gold into calf Aaron was a high priest Aaron had experienced the presence of God then they said this is your God O Israel that brought you out of the land of Egypt substitution Moses you are no longer the one we don't know what has become of you this is the God that brought us out of Egypt the God of gold the God of gold so when Aaron saw it look at what he did again he built an altar before it he built an altar imagine he built an altar <laughs> Aaron built an altar he created a gold a model calf for them he built an altar and he made a proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast to the Lord which Lord which Lord the Lord of money 
Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. <sighs> they felt God's delay is denial. The one that is surprising is it is Aaron, a church leader. It is Aaron, the one that received the calling into the into the ministry of priesthood that molded a golden calf for them. He is the one that built an altar for them. He is the one that said, Here is your God. Aaron is someone that has seen the move of God. He was close to Moses. He was there with Moses as his spokesman. Everything God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, it was echoed through, through Aaron. Aaron saw the power of God. The ten plagues. Aaron saw the move of God. The miracles, the pestilence, the plagues, the death, the Passover. He saw it. Someone that knows the presence of God. He made them an idol to worship. He was pressed by the demand of men and women. He was influenced by the noise of the crowd. He got carried away by the ovation of the crowd. Give us another God. He was moved by their plight. He also felt the waiting was too long. Maybe he shared their pain and frustration. And he created an alternative for them. <laughs> he created an alternative for them. Another God. Like Israel. If we look at our own life as well. We can ask ourselves, what other gods have I created in my life? What other idols have I created in my life? What is that thing that I feel waiting for God is boring, is killing me, I can't continue? And you feel we can't wait any longer for him. We no longer wait for his presence. Nor for the leading of his Holy Spirit. We now rely on our head knowledge. We even know it better. We feel it is too quiet. We need reverie, partying, socialization. What is happening now? We want to move fast and even faster than God from that which the Lord spoke into birth. I mean, has the Lord not given the vision in the first place? But we have grown so impatient. The Lord said, the word that I speak out of my mouth that go forth out of me, they will not return to me void but they will accomplish that which I have purposed them to accomplish. But our belief system and present community drive us so crazily to believe that that is everything we need. We subconsciously push God aside. We lean more on our social network, our friends, and our high net worth individuals. We pride ourselves in that. We even tell some people, you are not sharp. You are not taking advantage of your network. You are not building the relationship that you need that will take you to the next level. <laughs> With the gold, the gifts, the blessings that God gave to us, we have turned to men to make an idol for us. 
with the gold i repeat the gifts and the blessings that god gave to us from the egyptians from the labor of your hand from the creativity from in your head from things that god put in your hand that has blessed you with that blessing we now taught ourselves it is time to turn it over it is time to multiply on all these things that we have it is time to seek a further dimension of how we can multiply this thing we go to men we go to men we go to Aaron's and we tell Aaron here is what I have bless me here is what I have give me that thing it will work I believe like the centurion here is what I have I'm embarking on this on this journey I'm embarking on this thing here is what I have here is my my sacrifice give me what you have and men make an idol for us our heart has gradually stopped panting after the Lord we are full and lack nothing we have grown fat like Jeshurun <laughs> and we lack nothing the lord god has blessed us but we have forgotten him of what use is it to seek the lord maybe your heart wonders that <laughs> since you can survive with what your hands have gotten you in life ah, don't be unwise my brothers and my sisters the eternal value or reward of a man or a woman's life is determined by the abundance of what he or she has i take that again the eternal value or reward of a man or woman's life is not determined by the abundance of what he or she has the wealth the gifts the talents, the fame, the crowd, the huge followers, be physical or on social media, the ovation, as loud as it is, Jesus said, all this is not what qualifies a man for eternal value before God. The life of a man consists not in what he has. The life of a man consists not in what he has. Luke 12 verse 15. Continue with our story. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them they have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said this is your God O Israel that brought you out of the land of Egypt even God quoted them verbatim even the most high quoted them verbatim even the most high quoted them verbatim and the lord quoted them verbatim and the lord said to moses i have seen these people and indeed it is a stiff naked people now therefore let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them and i may consume them and i will make of you and i will make of you a great nation the lord planned to destroy them his anger his anger was kindled against them his anger was kindled against them that sounds like god telling jesus christ about us saying jesus 
See your people that you saved from bondage. When did you leave the earth that they have quickly turned out of the way which I commanded them? The Lord said they have turned aside quickly. Quickly. I mean, I feel that is very hurtful to the Lord. I feel that is hurtful. I mean, he is probably like he's looking at them. He said, I will make them my own people. I will be their God. They will be my people. And then suddenly he said, oh my. They have turned aside quickly. I'm doing everything to establish them as a great nation. To provide for them. To cater for them. To defend them. But they have turned aside quickly. We have made for ourselves idols. Our leaders. Parents. Uncles. Aunties. Brothers. Sisters. They have made us idols to attach our faith to. Instead of the living God. We have sought, sought after emblems and artifacts to reach God. If you don't do certain things, God will not answer you. If you don't do this, 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 God will not touch you. <laughs> Remember, Aaron made the golden calf for the people. Never let that leave your consciousness, leave your mind. Aaron made the golden calf for the people. Aaron was a priest. So, Moses came down from the mountain. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain. And the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. The tablets were written on both sides. On the one side and on the other side they were written. Now the tablets were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua remember joshua was not part of them he was by the mountain with with joshua and joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted he said to moses there is a noise of war in the camp but moses said because moses god had already spoken to moses on the mountain as he was coming down it is not the noise of the shout of victory nor the noise of the cry of defeat but the sound of singing I hear. So it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot and he cast the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made, burned it in the fierce, in the fire, and ground it to powder and he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did these people do to you? Good question. What did these people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? Yeah. Good question. Remember, Moses did not even talk to the children of Israel. I mean, by this account, it was Aaron he spoke to. He said, what did these people do to you? What did they do to you? That you have brought so great a sin upon them. What did they do to you? What did, our, what did we do to them? That they have led us astray. What did you do to them? That they keep leading you astray. What did you do to them? So Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord become hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. Self-defense. For they said to me, Make us gods that shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, whoever has any gold, let them break it off. Watch it. So they gave it to me and I cast it into the fire and this calf came out. Self-defense with a lie. 
he he molded the calf for them <laughs> he said the calf just more evolved you cannot be a leader a church leader and blame the people that you are leading for the mistakes that you commit if you take moses as a pattern of jesus it is like jesus asking the church leaders asking the unit leaders asking the pastors asking the deacons asking the deaconess asking the bishops asking the archbishops asking the reverend asking the apostle asking the prophet asking the teachers asking the evangelists asking the unit leaders what did these people do to you that you have brought a great sin upon them will you stand before the lord jesus and said they are very selfish people they are very greedy they made me to do this thing to them they sought for things that i do not have and i created something for them to keep them busy i made them very busy they were seeking for god they were seeking for gods moses they said you are dead they don't even know what has become of you so i created another god for them i got them very busy be careful how busy you get your people to be people were ruthless and aaron could not stop them either now when moses saw that the people were unrestrained for aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies then moses stood in the entrance of the camp look at how he decided it he said whoever is on the lord's side come to me he didn't say whoever is on aaron's side the high priest he said whoever is on the lord's side come to me it wasn't a decision between denomination it wasn't a decision between i'm i'm, I'm for i'm for this person and i'm behind this person on this it was a decision of whoever is on the lord's side come to me you have to decide whose side you are you have to decide whose side you are you may tell me but paul said follow me as i follow christ the qualification is follow christ are you following christ so that i can follow you if you're not following christ if your modus operandi is not showing that of somebody following christ then i have the right to follow god and all the sons of levi gathered themselves together to him and the judgment came on that day about three thousand men died because of the sin of idolatry the moses said consecrate yourself today to the lord that he may bestow on you a blessing this day for every man has opposed his son and his brother that was consecrated like jesus moses went up to make atonement for their sins now it came to pass on the next day that moses said to the people you have committed a great sin so now i will go up to the lord perhaps i can make atonement for your sin he prayed for them but the lord still plagued them and the lord said to moses whoever has sinned against me i will blot him out of my book now therefore go lead the people to the place of which i have spoken to you behold my angel shall go before you nevertheless in the day when i visit for punishment i will punish upon them for their sin so the lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf which aaron made the lord plagued them 
because of what they did with the calf which Aaron made them. The Lord, the plague, the people, and Aaron, the calf and Aaron. The Lord plagued them. What do we learn from this? In Habakkuk 2 verse 18 to 20, the word of God says, What profit is the image that its maker should carve it? <clears throat> the molded image, a teacher of lies. A teacher of lies. <laughs> that the maker of its mold should trust in it. To make mute idols. Woe to him who says to wood, Awake, to silent stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, yet in it there is no breath at all. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. But the Lord is in his holy temple let all the earth keep silence before him one of the cry that moses said to separate between the truth and the lie between god and man between god and the priest was who is on the and the Lord is asking you, whose side are you? Are you on the side of that which exalts your heart, your knowledge, the stronghold above the knowledge of God? The Lord is asking us to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against his knowledge and to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The only person we are accountable to is God. He is the judge of all things. You can fear man and disobey God. You can fear man and say, well, the Lord will understand. You can stand with man in wrong things and say, well, the Lord will understand. You can stand with them and behave as if you're trying to be understanding with them. And the Lord is calling you to stand firm for him. But you are you're observing the countenance of man to speak the truth you go behind and pacify them publicly you stand with them like the children of Israel they said Moses we don't know what has become of him we can see you make us an idol what are those things that you have exalted above God and his knowledge think about them you know them hide nothing from the lord he knows all things and he's ready to help you today he's ready to help us that will keep the lord in front of us and men behind him we will keep the lord first in front of us and men who belong to where they belong. The Lord first, men second. Subject everything to the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let money be last. God first. God first. You can't hide from the Lord. Hebrews 4.13 says, There is no creature hid, hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. 
not to man not to man <laughs> not to man before him before him the holy spirit the eyes of the lord run to and through the whole earth searching for man men and women young and old whose heart is perfect towards him hmm. yes whose heart is perfect towards him whose heart is perfect towards him to show himself strong on their behalf open your heart before him let us come boldly to his presence to his throne of grace that we may obtain mercy in time of need like this in time of need like this the crisis has come the earth is groaning under the pandemic there is nothing hidden from god if god be god follow him if god be god serve him if god be god serve him elijah didn't say if god be god serve me he said if god be god serve him serve him serve him if god be god serve him david said in psalm 18 verse 13 to 16 the lord thundered from heaven and the most high uttered his voice hailstones and coals of fire he sent out his arrows and scattered the foes the enemies lightnings in abundance and he vanquished them then the channels of the sea were seen the foundations of the world were uncovered at god's rebuke O lord at the blast of the breath of his nostrils in the midst of the pandemic in the midst of the ravaging storm the lord sent from above he took me he drew me out of many waters out of the drowning circumstances of life the lord is ready to draw you out of many waters out of those things that are stronger than you out of those believe that system out of that acquisition out of that thing that has taken your heart away from him out of that thing that has shut out his presence out of that things that will not make us serve god out of things we inherited in our culture and principles that will not make us serve God. Strongholds that is holding us captive. It is you and God. No one else. It is you and God. If today, in this era, the sky start falling down and the earth start shaking, man, men and women, old and young, the reality that will hit us is so this is it <laughs> this is it what will you call upon at that time <sighs> your charms your father your gods your wealth your poverty your knowledge your Ill illiteracy cannot stop this dark sky from falling in that instance the one who is higher than everything is the only one that all mankind will start calling on 
better know him now before it is too late you better know him now before it is too late forget about things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God forget the gold forget the molded calf forget Aaron Draw God and His presence into you. The presence of the Lord. Seek ye the Lord when He may be found. The crisis has come. Let us invite the Holy Spirit into our life. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. He is our God. He is the only one that can keep us safe. He is the only one that can give us, show us the ways of the Father. He is the only one that can set our mind, our affection on the Father. He is the only one that can keep us in God. It is not by our strength nor by our power. It is not by our connection or by what we are not connected to. It is the Lord that saves. Father, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. Father, we thank you because you sent Jesus to die for us. Father, we thank you because you sent the Holy Spirit to bring us closer and reveal Jesus and reveal you to us. Thank you. The earth is going through shaking that you are aware of, O Lord. But our hope is in you, Lord. Our hope is in you, O Lord God of heaven and earth. Our hope is in you. Lord, for as many as desire to come closer to you, to cultivate that presence, Lord, you are the only one that can give yourself to them. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God be upon them right now be upon them right now make them your habitation lord yes make them your habitation lord turn them back at your reproach turn them back at your reproach father for those seeking help from other gods holy spirit reach out to them bring them to you bring them to jesus and let them become a partaker of your grace of your love of the love of god of the peace of god thank you father thank you we give you all the glory and all the honor Thank you for healing the hearts of men and women. Thank you for bringing your presence so strong upon their hearts. Thank you for strong presence. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For mending the hearts of men to you, O God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. We give you praise, O God. We give you glory, O God. We give you honor, Jehovah. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, be thou exalted, Lord. 
Thank you, Father. Peace. 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 Like river. Yes. Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we prayed. God bless you and remain blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.